I förra veckans avsnitt befann sig amerikanerna i vikingatidens birka. I tävlingen misslyckades Jessica med att göra upp eld och tvingades lämna allt för Sverige. Den här veckan går resan ända upp till Polcirkeln. Och det är Kirstins tur att få en glimt av sin historia. I have to call my dad. This is unreal. You are now on the north side of the Arctic Circle. This is Lapland, the land of the midnight sun and billions of killer mosquitoes the size of birds. <laughs> <laughs> it's, also, <laughs> it's also the home of the Swedish Indians, Samerna. This is the wilderness, and that's what you are going to experience for a couple of days. Soon a helicopter will come and take you to a magic place, far from roads and civilization. Yes! Oh, yes. So you're looking this brilliant. isn't far enough. <laughs> uh, I thought we were there. There's roads here, that's, that's the key. It's impossible to get your entire luggage into the helicopter, uh -oh. so you have to repack really light. What? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't know how Guy is going to make it without his belongings, but I hope <laughs> he will survive. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> have a walk on the wild side, Anders. All wow. right. Wow. Okay. Wow, you guys. Helicopter ride. This I'm used wild. to packing for backcountry type oh, scenarios uh, uh, like this one, crazy. so I didn't have any problem uh, hearing that we had to pack lightly. Dude, the Arctic Circle. This I is know. crazy, really cool. right? Awesome. Cool. No one cool. I would consider myself a textbook survivalist. I know how to survive in theory, but because I'm a quick learner, I can put it into practice. Nature book, is it in English? Oh, we're gonna survive. It's not, yes. in, it's not in English. Good, good. How are we supposed to understand it? Everyone else is like, tough motherfuckers. I'm delicate. This is hard for me. All right, let's get packed up, huh? Right. Go. Good luck, guy. Oh. The most important thing is dry feet. So pack socks, extra underwear. A couple plastic bags, you guys, for anything, if you want to keep anything really dry. Uh, Flip-flops, maybe, would be helpful, too. Obviously, Eric is in his elements. He's, like, so into this shit. I don't get it. He's, like, crazy. Like, what? You probably don't want to bring those beautiful, uh, what is it, the leopard? The leopard pants? Pants. But they're kind of camouflaging. Well, I've been watching Guy's uh, suitcase, which is, I think, the largest suitcase. I didn't even know they were made that large. <laughs> The only thing I could offer him was maybe some color tone suggestions for the backcountry. Uh, I could bring these again, remember? Oh my gosh, those are perfect. Woohoo! It had nothing to do with backcountry fabrics or anything else. It's all, you know, in the city, fancy stuff. And it's nice. We're in the woods, guy. You realize this, right? Yeah, but what's the point of being fashionable if you can't wear it? I don't need to. You don't that. actually wear that, do you? That was that's the like joke. a '70s nightmare. That's why I brought it. It's it's a '70s disco shirt. You never know when you're gonna need things like that. Do you know how to do it? Wait, no, I don't on. even know what this is. You gotta go like this, so no water. Oh, oh. Guy was a disaster packing. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't care about the weather, and then he'll worry about it once he's in it. You really look like a hiker. I do. Totally. I haven't ridden in a helicopter ever in my life. So to hear the choppers come in, to get up in that thing and feel the uh, weightless flight, I guess is the only thing I can call it. Uh, it was very exciting. Bye, Say goodbye to the last bit of civilization. The helicopter kind of freaked me out a little bit, but the scenery was amazing. It was enough that my anxieties and my fears, man, they just went right out the window. I was stuck in the middle, so I didn't get to see as much as I'd like from the helicopter. But what I did see was absolutely amazing. 
We saw gorgeous trees, gorgeous water. I really don't have the words to describe the beauty. <laughs> We're on the helicopter flying down here, and I'm looking down, thinking, oh, it looks pretty. And he's like, yeah, I'm getting a boner from this. I'm like, what? Let's go check out the island. By the way, guys, we are now in bear country, so um, snack, snack foods or anything. I mean, I don't know where we're sleeping tonight, but you don't want them in your next to where you're sleeping, because they'll come right in yep. the door. You know. uh, but let me just tell you this, if you have snacks next to where you're sleeping, I'll probably come in the door too. Dishekta, <laughs> can you yelp me? No. Some kind of crazy person is gonna shoot us. Hello. Guy, you just can't go walking in people's houses. What do you mean? They need the decorating American advice. Here. <laughs> you don't think they need decorating advice in this they place? I, know they do. I don't think they care about anything except surviving. This is like Mad Max from Thunderdome. So, it what is, the right? What is this? Look yes. Snow. In a world before go time. time. In After a place that time forgot. This is where they live. But seriously, check out the solar panels. I like to watch movies about the future when it's the apocalypse and everything's collapsed and the world's ending. And you think about some kind of post-apocalyptic world where there's no energy or anything. The place is condemned. So living up here, you can see a basic bare standard of living. It's just barely getting by. No power except solar panels, and I think it takes a, an extreme amount of planning. So it's a, it's a lifestyle that I idealize in my mind, but being here, it's a totally different thing. Brad, this is the land that time forgot. We're for above sure. the Arctic Circle. Do you know what that means? No, what I really mean? don't that know. That means we're by the North Pole, like by Santa Claus. Santa Claus? Santa, Santa Claus better. could be close by. Yeah, actually. that'll be the next time we see another human being. Even though it's crazy, I think I would like it. I mean, the idea that I can just walk down to a stream over here and go fishing and catch dinner, and I can just drink the water right out of the stream, that'd be okay with me. You know what this is, right? This is the Fiel Holga Nord. Fiel Holga Nord. Yes, from the from the anthem. Oh yeah, you yeah, mountainous yeah, yeah, north. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, yeah. Fiel Holga Nord. Oh yeah. I don't think I could live like this unless I'd been raised like this. I would definitely miss the stresses of everyday life that we get used to. But I think I'll be one of the ones that handles it all the right. Uh, I, I, I seem to adapt to situations pretty easily. Being a substitute, that happens. So just sit back and take it all in and just wait to see what happens. Hey guys, there's smoke coming out of this oh, chimney. Let's, let's go. go. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're just gonna barge in, we wanna knock. You're taking too long. Dude. What are you doing? Jeez, you guys. Hi. Welcome to Pizzioda. I'm My Guy. My name is Steve. Steve Guy. Shostan. Steve. Steve, I'm Greg. Steve. Nice to meet you. Oh, the people that we've seen, the, the kind of native people, I don't know what the heck they're living here for. Maybe the land is free. It better be free because I wouldn't live here otherwise. You look a lot like my mom. Oh, yes. Oh. In her face, in the face. <laughs> Maybe this is your daughter, daughter? <laughs> Maybe. And your Sami daughter. Sami. She kind of looks Sami. You can, you can see it. Yeah, yeah, it's the same face. Mm, it is, yes. yeah. There had always been rumors in my family from my mom's side that we had some Sami in us. So when I saw the uh, woman in the cafe, she had the same eyes as like my mom has. And I was like, oh my God, maybe my mom is right. Don't you think this is where Shaz's family's from? I think from? it's a good chance. Wait, she does look like my mom in the face, it's weird. That's pretty strange. I'm so excited to know where my ancestors came from. It's important to me and everybody at home. So it would be like utmost awesome feeling if I wouldn't have to sweat elimination. Hello again and welcome to Laponia, the world heritage. This is Europe's last wilderness. How do you feel about being here? Oh, it's amazing. Good. It's amazing. It's great. Beautiful. Awesome. Okay with the rain? Sure. No mosquitoes. Fewer mosquitoes. mosquitoes. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, it's a tough place to be in. And in a place like this, you have to be a good hunter. And a good hunter does not only mean that you're a good shot. 
It's time for the team challenge. All right. Bring it on. Let's do it. Let's go. Yeah. De båda lagen har fått var sin mapp med bilder på svenska vilda djur. Men det är bara vissa av djuren man får poäng för när man träffar. Deltagarna får fem minuter på sig att memorera vilka. Tävlingen går sen ut på att välja rätt och pricka de utvalda djuren. Deltagarna kommer att skjuta från tre distanser, 10, 15 och 20 meter. De har sex skott på sig på varje distans. Sex djur står uppställda, men bara fyra av dem ger poäng. I det gula laget tävlar Brian, Kirsten och Greg. Och i det röda, Guy, Chastin och Eric. Put me on the easiest target, because my eyesight isn't so good, and I tend to go to the left. That's because you're jerking the trigger. Don't jerk the trigger. If you go smooth where it startles you, you won't pull left. I feel really confident about this competition. We've got a hunter on our team, and, you know, I've been shooting rifles for a long time, 20 years. <laughs> Just before you get on target, you go like this, like, get your breaths in, all right? And when it. it it should startle you, and when you startle, then you know and you did it. You did good. I feel really good about this competition. I've hunted for a long time, but Shaw is, like she said, an expert marksman. That's perfect. Now you want to, if you can, get this elbow against your body. Yeah, yeah. You want to create a pedestal. Okay. Hold it like this. Move it forward when you're ready. And then boom. Nice. My experience with guns is very, very limited. I've shot a gun once, so. We'll see if that beginner's luck can tie over again. When I do target practice, it's usually at the 100 yard mark. So you're gonna go first, you're gonna go second, I'm gonna go third. Well, here's the secret. My parents are very into gun rights, Second Amendment. We believe very strongly in that. I've really been shooting my whole life. So we have uh, me is a great shot, Brian, who has God, and Kirsten, who's never been to elimination. So chances are on our side. Officer! I got it. Get all six, guy. You're gonna do it just fine. Done, dudes. Listen to. Don't we have to hold it? Dry up this gun. Okay. There you go. You're good. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. I'm gonna try to make sure your safety's off. I know it's off. That's this is your safety. Remove your safety. Easy peasy. Don't step over the line. You don't want to get DQ'd. You did. You did, you you did great, yes. man. Yes. You did great. Good job. Oh, I did it. Sweet. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Do I do it again, right? Yeah. All right. Ready. You're probably talking yourself out of it. If you're going to hold it that long, you're just going to start. And remember, bring it up to you, not you to it, if that makes sense. Fuck. It's OK, don't get frustrated. All right, I'm going to try something else. I'm going to try the bobcat. Breath. I did. Got it. Got it. Nice. One. Dead center. Good shot. Here we go. All right, you're rocking now. I got one more bullet left. Yep. All right. You can All do right. it. You, you can, can do, do it. it. All right, motherfucker, you're dead. <laughs> Watch out. Watch your foot.
Good job, buddy. Did it. All right, I got three out of four. That's pretty good. I'm very confident in my team. Both of them have shooting experience. I'm not going to elimination this time. I'm not going home. And I'm not going to risk any of my teammates going home either. We're absolutely winning today. Yellow team all the way. Okay, you ready? Yep. So keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready. Keep it locked in just like that. And then when you're ready, let them have it. Nice. Yeah! Nice. Yeah! Perfect. Nice! Perfect. Nice. Perfect. Awesome. That's it. You did exactly right. Don't Good be surprised. Job. Good job. You did exactly That's right. Exactly right. Excellent shot. Okay, now which one are you shooting at this time? Foxy. Foxy. Yes. Taking Moxie, out the Moxie Foxy. Foxy. Foxy Brown. Excellent. Awesome. Dude, yes. Good job. Kirsten, the one who never has shot a gun, really, except for one other time, hits all four and four direct shots. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm feeling a little bit of pressure. <laughs> the yellow team. Yeah. The green team, yeah. We're going to win. We're going to win. Uh. Which one are you doing first? I'm going to shoot the big blackbird on the right first. Okay? The bird? Yep. I know you hit that one. I can see I the see water it. come off of it. It's all right, man. Control your breathing. <sighs> Son of a bitch. Take your it's all time. right. Don't get angry. Yeah. Breathe. Control your breathing. Come on, you know, so control your breathing. I don't know if you hit, Just relax. I relax. can see it coming right off the fucking wood. Damn. Last one, guys. Good work, good, job, good work. You saw how many yeah, times I hit that wood. stupid yeah. kept wood. the wood. Shit. All, all right. right. All right, so you just know you got to aim right. a little higher. Oh. Let's go for the next round. Come, Come on. on, let's go. I am starting with the wolf. Bring in your elbow and rest it against your body. Dude. Just 
Just okay. trust me, okay? Jeez. It sounds like it's hitting something now. Yes! Alright, good job, good job. Good job, man. Okay. You got it, man. You got it. Sounded like it was low again. All right, all right. And just hold it really tight. Yes. All right. All right, you got two. But so, I'm not happy with that. That's a disappointment for me. Uh, you, my, my thoughts right now are a mix. I mean, I feel like I put him in a bad place by only hitting two. Uh, and so I'm disappointed in that. At this point, though, it's out of my hands. And there's a certain sense of relief in that. And now I'm just sitting back and watching what happens. And there's really nothing more that I can do. I hope Craig can do his part as well as Kirsten did hers. Big. Which one are you going for? The next one over, I believe, is some kind of bird thing. Look. It's all right. Damn it. That was low. It's all right. You're going to have those. I know I heard something. It's a little high. Not yeah. too, too high. Taking out all the time. It's okay, it's okay. Fuck. I'm going for the bear next to it. Right. Okay, it's okay. It's all right. It's okay. Pick it it's up. Okay. You're doing fine. Do this for your mom. Red team and yellow team, you both avoided to hit any unapproved targets, so it's just the hits that will tell who's winning this challenge. 
So that means, red team, you're safe for one other week. And yellow team, you have to meet each other in an individual challenge to decide who of you is going to leave this week. I'm very upset. I apologize. I thought for sure that I would be able to actually hit, hit those. And I mean, I got one, but obviously that wasn't enough. No, that's, you know, the, I, I, you know, I thought it was good. I thought you did really well. I mean, you went up against a, you know, she is a police uh, officer. She's a police officer and, trains and, and stuff like that. was in the army. But she knows what she's That's doing. That's also true, yeah. She knows what she's doing. I just should, I should be shooting more, I guess, you know? I'm so excited. I'm not in the elimination round. I can't take this fan anymore. What more should I say? Oh, my God. Go, Shaw. She pulled us through. OK, I'm done. I'm thinking it's cold. I want to get inside. I'm not even thinking about the game and the results and the thing tomorrow. I'm thinking it's cold and I want to get inside. I feel like I've changed, but I'm not sure I can put my finger on it. I feel like being here in Sweden has helped me realize where a part of me has come from and help me to explain that uh, the way that I feel a lot of times is okay to feel. It's great to feel like everyone can be okay at the same time, instead of somebody's gotta be better than somebody else, or else if you're not better than so-and-so, then you're nothing, which is kind of what you're trained to be like in America. <laughs> I really wish that Kirsten, my wife, were here. She's the only reason I'm here. She's the one that saw the posting and said, hey, you need to go do this. And I said, okay, you think I can do it? She said, yeah, you can do it, you're gonna win. I said, okay. So yeah, every step of the way, she just keeps encouraging me and uh, keeps pushing me along. And um, that's what a marriage is all about. What's so weird about the song Om Du Vaha is she's the reason I'm here. She's the reason that I do what I do. She's always present in my mind. And uh, every time I play that song and I'm here, it's like... <laughs> I wish you were here. waiting for the elimination to be over when you weren't a part of it was bad. Oh, oh this is God. like, this is your, yeah, that's right. Yeah. This is your first one. This is my first one. Yeah. yeah. But let me ask you this. Did you ever in a million years think that you would go north of the Arctic Circle, that you would see reindeers in the wild, which we saw? Did you ever in a, I mean, would this have no, ever? No, no. I'm just, Th and this whole experience, like, it, I've been in the middle of it. But I don't know if it's really, like, fully sunk in. And I don't know how long it's going to take. So, if I take anything home, definitely stop selling myself short for stuff. I, I definitely have more strength than I thought I did. And I definitely have more capabilities than I thought I did. Oh, you got game. Yeah, you got a lot of capabilities. For sure. I'm thinking now, I just kind of want to get this over with and done and see how we all do. I am a bit anxious. Um, I'm not ready to go home yet, but what happens, happens. <laughs> My name is Kirsten Highfield. I'm 28 and I'm born and raised in Colorado Springs, Colorado. My biggest interest is music. I love singing, playing piano, 
And then that bleeds into musical theater. I love Broadway shows. And then that bleeds into costuming. I love sewing. And I've, the, the productions I've gotten to do costumes for have been just a blast. Colorado, you made me love you. So I'm putting you on track. Hey, I'm here for my family. I'm Kirsten. Um, I'm thinking something a little more Swedish. I already have this. I got the doll horses to honor my uh, grandparents, my more, more, and more far. And uh, I love that they're an expression. You can see somebody's tattoo and kind of get an idea of what they like. I would describe myself as very selfless. I always put people before me. I'm very caring and kind and silly. I'm absolutely very silly. And I love making people laugh. When I say I'm 100% Swedish, all of my ancestors came from Sweden. I would really like to learn more about that and kind of bring it back into the family when I visit Sweden. I, I, I can't wait to see everything. It's, it's gonna be amazing, I'm sure. Cool. I think when I actually set my feet in Sweden and actually get there, it'll kind of be a, a surreal feeling. I'm just expecting a lot of fun and adventure and just be ready for absolutely anything and everything that comes my way. Today's finally my day. Anders saved me from the rain and sent me to beautiful, sunny Stockholm and told me to go open my box at the military museum. I have no idea why, but I can't wait for that explanation. Dear Kirsten Highfield, Highfield is a name that originates from the Swedish Hugfeldt. The reason you carry that name is because your great-great-grandfather's father, Gustav Peterson, born in 1818 in Amal, Sweden, took that name after he became a soldier, a profession your relatives on your father's side of the family had for hundreds of years. It's amazing to see um, where I came from on my dad's side. I've never seen pictures from his side before. These are just amazing. And it's very interesting that uh, they're a military family because uh, dad still works for the military. Very hardy bunch, which is exactly what I was expecting. Three years into him serving his country, January 15th, 1842, he marries Maria Maha Bringle's daughter. Together they had eight children. Gustav's second son, your great-great-grandfather, Frederick Hugfeldt, was born 1844 in Kisselskog, Sweden. 1891, Frederick takes his son Carl with him to emigrate to America to build a new life. It takes him a long six years to bring the rest of the family over to America. In 1897, Frederick and Carl finally get to reunite with the rest of the family in Chicago. To be separated from your family for six years it's just, it's unfathomable. It's, I go crazy if I don't get to see my family for six months. Oh, it's absolutely amazing. I don't think anybody knew any of this. It's so cool. I got a chance to walk around in the military museum and it was really surreal kind of being transported back into that time and really seeing how they lived and how hard life was for them. Oh, wow. Oh, too cool. 
I found a costume just like the one Gustav wore. And I got to try it on, put it on. It was a crazy feeling. Oh, wow, that's cool. I have to call my dad. This is unreal. Hello? Hey, I'm sorry to wake you up, but I just had to call you. I am wearing the uniform that my that your great great grandfather wore when he was in the military. You're kidding. Nope. Sure, try one because I. That's amazing. Yep, it, it's it's absolutely crazy. This means a lot for my dad as well. He had to travel a lot when we were kids, and I know he regrets that a bit. But uh, to be able to kind of give him uh, this experience will definitely make him happy and uh, make him proud of me. Bye. Bye. Love you. Bye. Oh, that's a way to wake up in the morning. Oh, that's a wake up call. It's too cool. I knew he'd love it. Oh. The strength in my family line, I hope that's gonna give me confidence to keep going and win this thing so I can meet my family. In the end, that's the gold at the end of the rainbow. And with the strength in my family, I think I can find the strength in myself to do that. How did you become a cop, or, or why, is the better question. Not really. Um, it's something that I always wanted to do, even as like a young child. You know, some people just know they want to be a doctor or know they want to be, you know, a lawyer. Or... That's what I knew I wanted to do. Hmm. So um, as soon as I graduated high school, I went into the military. I went in as a military police officer. Wow. So I joined the Army, did that, went to basic training, went to school, and um, I did that for four years. And when I got out of the military, I went to the police academy. So what's the best part of um, serving and protecting? You know what I like about it? They've got a saying that they, they say being a cop is 99% boredom and 1% sheer terror. You just, <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. 1% sheer terror. <laughs> I, li I like your, I like your, when you go into your drop now voice. It's so funny. Oh, yeah, when I get drop crazy. Now, my yeah. Of course I get scared. There's times at work I get scared I wouldn't be human. And I wouldn't do the job anymore if I didn't get scared. You know, being scared um, fights complacency. If you're complacent, you're dead, you know. And I had a good sergeant one time that said to me, he says, if you go to these calls and you're not scared, I don't want you to come work for me, you know. You need to be scared. You need to realize that you can die. And without a doubt, I could, I could die at any minute at work. It happens every day. It's hard, you know. I go to work. I work 14 hours a day. Um, you know, like my youngest daughter, I've, I've never even... She's going into second grade. I've never been to a play because I have to work. I do have a lot of struggles and worries, you know, raising um, three children. But I always strive to be better than what I am right now. And I do beat myself up a lot. You know, I want more for them. I want bigger and better things for them. And, you know, I want to be the best mom. I don't have a dad at home for them, so I have to play two roles, you know? It's just me. Well, having my children, of course, was an aha moment for me, you know? Um, yeah, Sweden could be an aha moment for me, you know? I'm out of my, you know, my circle of comfort, you know? This is totally out of the norm for me to do this. Aha moments happen in all different places. Yeah, yeah right? what's yours? <laughs> oh my God, I have so many. Let's see. Um, well, you should know a little bit. If you have bit. so many, can they be an aha moment? Yeah, they can be aha moments. Okay. First of all, you need to know that we all had difficulties. Abusive life. I know you didn't grow up with much money. You, I don't know what your deal was. Yeah, I don't know. It's yeah, something else. It's crazy. Right, crazy. <laughs> I, you know, my, my dad was killed when I was, like, five. Whoa. Somebody torched his office. Killed him. Yeah. It was a dentist. Who kills a dentist? Wow. And then my mother broke her spine. Oh, my God. So, you know, just because I look like I have a fancy life doesn't mean it's always been that way. You know, you have these moments, okay. Yeah. And I learned at that young age that things are fragile. 
People are fragile, income is fragile, life is fragile. And you have to adjust to whatever is dealt to you, whether God deals it to you or the hemisphere or whatever. And I learned right then and there to be resilient and change. So I see that during these challenges and these eliminations, I, everyone says, why aren't you scared? Aren't you? I don't have any fear. I've lived through the worst part. Everything else is gravy. You know, yep. every day is gravy. And you know, I had a brain tumor that almost killed me. Yeah. That was seven years ago. So when you're giving a death sentence and you, and you think you only have six months to live, you think, okay, if I live, no, you have to retract that. When I live, when I survive this, how will it affect me? How will I change my life? How can I be a better person? And when I overcame that brain tumor by not listening to the doctors and not believing that I was gonna die and finding my own way out of that situation. Every day I woke up and I, instead of, instead of owning that tumor, I said, I am happy, I am healthy, I am you know, strong. You, if you don't own something, if you don't own the pain, if you don't own the disease, it'll go away. I believe that. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, it, this conversation has been interesting for me because yesterday we came to this place north of the Arctic Circle. We got on helicopters to fly to a remote location that you can't access except by helicopter. At the end of the earth. At the end of the earth. <laughs> yes, literally. So that we could find an adventure. And then we get here and it rains so much that what we discover is that each other you know we right. brought the adventure yeah we are the adventure so thank yeah. you so much for um not giving up hope to the rain yeah. um but pushing the rain aside for the sharing of your stories the I rain really appreciate was appreciated i'm sorry no the rain was a gift the rain was our gift yeah you know i just wish i had the time to make these cabins a little prettier they're really bothering me <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm not kidding. Just the fact that you're leaning against a staple board back there is really killing me. Yeah, like, what is that? <laughs> That's the back of something. I don't know what. God oh help God. us. God All right. I'm well, sending let's... them new drapes when I get home. That was Stig when we came out. And here was it thought that some of us would live. Jag har väntat i 48 timmar nu på att det här ska ge sig, men det är som att vi har flyttat in i ett moln. Och i det här iskalla, blåsiga, smattrande regnet har nu blivit dags för den individuella tävlingen där förloraren är den som får lämna allt för Sverige denna gång. Hello guys. Oh, hey, Anders. That's some miserable weather we're having. Uh -huh. Yes it is. Are you summer? Special for us. But you're okay still? Oh, yes. Okay, yeah, we're good. fine. Yeah. Any wish for this uh, competition? Math competition. Math? Yes. Okay. Please. Okay. Yeah, I'm hoping against math. <laughs> and uh, something very wet. Something yeah. wet? I think I can Okay. I think that's a safe bet, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Wendy? Wendy? Cold, cold Wendy yes. and yeah. wet, yeah. Maybe. In that case, you got it. All right. <laughs> yeah. Yay. In today's individual challenge, you are going to compete in lasso. Lasso throwing or roping, I don't know what you call it. Okay. But before the competition, you are going to be instructed by one of Sweden's best lasso thrower. And he's also going to be the referee. So, good luck. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you. So, we... lasso throwing? Lasso throwing, yeah. Yeah. Um, lasso throwing. Never done it. Well, you know, yesterday the three of us were assuming that the competition yesterday was going to be hunting with something other than a gun and that it was going to be lassoing. That's uh -huh. true. And we were greatly relieved because when Greg was growing up, he was a wannabe cowboy. Now, you busted me out here, but it is true. I always thought lassoing was cool, and so I did used to do it when I was little. Now, I haven't done it for a long time. I'm not making any promises. And so that's not any particular advantage over you guys. Growing up in Oklahoma, huh? with all the farms and all the ranches, Lassoing was a big deal, and I've tried it, and it's hard. Forty-five minutes before Anders told us, literally in my journal, I said, I hope it doesn't involve a lasso. 
So, I, I was hoping for some skill that might have given me an advantage. You aim with that hand, and when you let that go, you aim with that hand. Wonderful. The other guys do have experience with a lasso, but experience, as we learned yesterday, doesn't really mean much. Uh, they could have some bad throws, too, so I think I have a chance at this. It's very, very hard. It's not country and western lasso. Anybody who was born in Texas and raised in Oklahoma doesn't know how to throw that lasso. That's a whole new ball game. I can do it. I just have to really focus mentally, and it's just a matter of how well everybody else picks it up. Det gäller alltså att kasta lassot och få det runt renhornen. Deltagarna har fem kast var på sig. Actually, I feel pretty confident right now. This is a hard thing. I mean, if there's any kinds of nerves, if you clinch up even just a little bit, you're going to miss that thing. Um, so in order to beat me, Greg and Kirsten can only miss one. That was the last one. I'm disappointed in the outcome, but I'm not disappointed in myself. 
I think with one, I have a chance. I think with zero, there was nothing. It may be a little, but there's a chance. Even if I do go home, I've had an amazing, amazing trip. So, I'm the winner of this, no matter what. Frustrated. It really sucks. It's not what I not what I hoped for, and not what I planned on. I like to win. I wanted to go home winning. You know, I didn't want to go home losing. So uh, I'll miss everybody. And it's uh, I miss Sweden for sure. I've had some amazing times here. So um, I met some amazing people. Okay, my friends, it's time for one more participant to leave, Alt for Sverige. And the one that has to leave will be the one with the least hits. So I'm sorry, Greg. It's you who's leaving this time. Okay. Thank you, man. I feel really sad. This is uh, really not the way that I wanted today to end. And um, I'm happy for everybody else, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I'm just in disbelief at my complete and total failure. I'm always cautious about saying that I'm good at something because you just never know when you're gonna, you just never know when you're gonna train wreck, you know? I was really blown away. I really uh, had higher hopes for both of these challenges, you know? And, um, Felt really good about them going into them and then uh, just totally dropped the ball on both of them. Really sucks, it sucks a lot. But I'm proud for you guys and you, uh, you're you a fast learner, obviously. Good job. And so are you. So um, uh, I don't know how you did it, really. You know? It's hard, it's hard. Greg's really amazing, hard. He's, he's awesome. Great guy to be around. He will definitely be missed. But I, I'm, I'm glad it's not me. You guys are all my friends the now. The friendship and... starts. Yeah. Woohoo! Right. Even exactly. more so. It's like yeah. group hug. Oh man. Oh. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> it's Greg somewhere in there. It's a tough one, man. It sucks. It sucks. Yeah. I guess so. You have a magic broom to take him away? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. 
If it's any comfort, you're going to get the most spectacular departure so far. We're bringing in the helicopter for you. All right. You get your own helicopter Another ride. helicopter ride. Yeah. Fantastic. Dude. <laughs> so it's bye-bye. and that's, that's the way to make an exit. OK. Thanks, you guys. Bye, Good luck, all right? Have a safe trip. Bye. Bye. Facebook us. Greg had a lot of positive energy for this group. I mean, he's funny. Um, he's the rock star of the group. Uh, I think people are going to be really sad because the longer we're together, the closer we get. I don't know. It's the strangest thing. It's, it's hard to rejoice when you see a good friend like that who's made an impact and you go away. I'm not ready to see him get on that chopper and go. for your ancestors. I don't, I don't want you to leave without nothing. Okay. I got something here for you. We have, we got everything that we found about your family. Really? And this one is for you. Ah, oh, thank you so much. You can open it later, of course. I got something else here, I guess. You never got your family tree, right? I know. No, it's here. Oh, excellent. Thank that you so much. That one you can much, open Andrew. if you want, or if you want to enjoy the... Yes. I will bring home some amazing experiences, some really great friendships, um, some fantastic uh, stories to tell. Pam Manson. He's the guy that stole Fritz's money. This guy oh. right here. Yeah? Yeah. Thank it you so much. Someone said recently that uh, rain means change. It has been raining a lot lately. So, um, I mean, that means a lot of change, who knows? Are you afraid? I don't think they'd put us anywhere that we could get killed. What's this? This is a wreck salad. What, what salad? A wreck salad. What's a wreck? I didn't think I would come this far. I didn't think I would make it this far. And so now it's starting to get a little bit edgy. Do you think this is strawberry? This day made me feel like I belong in Sweden. I don't want to leave here. I do, I do have a hat. You do? Yeah. That's now, did genius. you see this coming? No. No, I don't. <laughs> to most people that are walking right now, they can look down on the ground, and it's just rocks to them, or it's just dirt. But where I'm standing right now, it's not just rocks. It's not just 